Hello from the Fortronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Accessing Hidden Pins on the Arduino Zero. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can basically gain six additional digital I.O. pins above and beyond the 20 that, that are documented. These pins are on the board, they're not really hidden, but they're not documented that you can use them as general digital pins. So we're gonna talk about how you can get six additional digital pins, and we'll also talk about some flexible communication capabilities with the Arduino Zero that, once again, aren't quite advertised that well. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the Arduino Zero was modeled after, you know, this standard Arduino form factor or the Arduino Uno sort of footprint form factor, but the Arduino Zero uses a much more advanced chip than the Uno. The Uno uses the Atmega 328P, which is an AVR architecture. The Zero uses a SAMD chip, which is a ARM uh, architecture. And it has, I mean, to start out with, it has more advanced features, but it also has more pins. And so one thing Arduino did to utilize some of these pins is they created communication specific pins. So for instance, on the Arduino Zero, pins, digital pins 11, 12, and 13 are for spy. Well, for the Zero, they said, we'll use this ICSP header for the spy communication, and then we'll leave these other pins free. So they just gave you some additional pins for spy communication. They did the same thing with two wire or I squared C communication. They created these dedicated SCL and SDA pins. And then finally, and this is not labeled in the picture, but on my newer zero board, it is labeled. They gave you this pin. And I remember when the zero first came out, there was a lot of mystery about what this pin was. And later Arduino kind of said, oh, well you can use this pin as a chip select or slave select pin for spy communication when you're communicating with more than one, I'll say, you know, spy slave module. And so they, they kind of advertise it as this, and, and on most boards it's labeled as ATN pin. But one thing that they don't advertise is you can actually use, whether it's the, the MISO, the, the clock, or the MOSI pins on spy, or whether it's the SCL or SDA pins for two wire, or whether it's the ATM pin, you can actually use those pins as general digital pins. So if you, if you don't have a project that uses spy communication, for instance, you can add three digital pins to that project. Okay, and this is something they don't really advertise, but it's real easy to do, and that's what we're gonna show in this video. And we'll also talk about some of the flexibility and communications. So let's jump to some code to show some example of using these digital pins and let's look at, in that code, I'll show you what these digital pins are numbered and how we know what their number is. Okay, so what I'm showing is a chart for pins for the Arduino Zero, and I apologize, I hope this is easy enough to read, but where this chart comes from, I actually cut it and pasted it into the sketch, but this, this actually comes from the variance file for the Arduino Zero, and I'll have on a different slide where you can find the variance file on your computer, but it is essentially a file that helps define, you know, it turns what the Atmel labels the pins on their data sheet. It basically sort of transcribes that over to the Arduino form factor. So if we look here, we have the pin number, we have the zero board pin, then we have what the manufacturer calls the pin, and then sort of the comments related to capabilities of the pin. So for instance, pin D0 and D1, we know that those are the serial COM pins. On the board, they're PA11 and PA10. And then this talks about some of the capabilities that Atmel gives them. But basically what we wanna pay attention to really is here, these pin numbers right here, as well as these pin numbers. So. If we go down a bit, these are all the pins we recognize. You know, digital pin zero to seven. Then when we get to the higher digital ones, digital pin eight to 13. Then when we get to the analog pins, A zero to A five. But here's where it starts to get interesting. So for SDA and SCL, those pins are mapped to pin number 20 and 21. So you could almost think of these as D20 and D21 if you wanted to use them as a digital pin. Same thing with SPY. So when we're talking about the SPY comp pins, the 
Miso or Mosi and the clock one, they have pin numbers. So you can think of these as D22, D23, D24. But if we go down here, here we find the ATN pin. So that's pin 38. So now that we know their pin numbers, we can actually use them as digital pins. So as I scroll down, here's my simple sketch to show an example. So I create this variable tog, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flash on and off three LEDs, and that's what I'm using toggle for, or tog. And so what I do is I take pin 38, and pin 38 was the ATN pin. I, pay, I take pin 22, which is the MISO pin for uh, spy communication, it's on the ICSP header, and then I take SDA from the two wire communication pins, uh, which is pin 20, and I turn them all into outputs. You then see me start three different serial communications, and I'll, I'll talk about that next. The Arduino Zero, nice thing, and, and this is advertised, but a lot of people still don't know about it, is you can use three different serial communication inputs. The, the normal one, which is D0 and D1, they actually call serial one, serial, which is the programming port, and serial USB. And so I'll, I'll talk about that next. So just don't worry about it. I'm just showing that all these serial begins will compile and run. Okay, back to the digital pins. So in my loop, all I'm doing is every second and a half, I turn one of the pins high, I turn the pins high and then I turn them low. And that's basically I'm gonna use that to flash an LED. Basically have an LED and a 1K ohm resistor and when I turn the pins high, it turns the LEDs on. When I turn them low, it turns them off. Once again, just demonstrating that you can use these pins as general digital pins. So let's see this code and in action. And just so you know, I'll have this these labels and this code on my blog if you wanna go check this out. Okay, so here is my zero. You can see I have a pin going to the ATN pin or a wire going into ATN pin. Here's the SDA pin hole, and then here's my uh, spy pin that I'm connecting to. So those are my three pins that aren't labeled as digital pins, but you can use them as digital pins. And then here's just my ground connection for the LEDs. So once again, I uploaded the code. The code just has the LEDs turn on and off every 1.5 seconds. And that's all you're seeing. I'm just turning on and off the pins, nothing too special. Once again, the point is to demonstrate that you can use those as general digital pins. Okay, now that we went over how we can get basically six additional digital pins from our zero board, let's talk a little bit about some uh, useful notes, mostly related to wired communication. So one of them I gave you a sneak preview into was, there's actually three different serial ports on the zero. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. The standard one, serial, the normal one, I'll say, that you can use to use the serial monitor when you're connected to the board is the programming port. But D0 and D1 are also a serial communication. And one thing I learned when I was first got the zero was that is not the serial that is connected to the programming port, which I was actually a little surprised. So to actually use D0 and D1 as serial communication, you actually have to use serial one. And then finally you have serial USB. So the zero has two USB ports. One is for programming, one is they call the native USB port. You can actually use that for serial communication as well using serial USB. Once again, something a lot of people don't realize is you have three different serial ports on the zero. And also you can add more communication ports. So you saw how we had you know, a, a spy header, we had dedicated pins for I squared C, and we have dedicated pins for serial. But if you go to the SAM D21 data sheet, you'll find out that, that the microcontroller used for the zero actually allows you to really route different capabilities to different pins. So, on the AVR architecture for MapMel, which is what the UNO uses, an AVR chip, a lot of the functionality was dedicated to certain pins. On the Zero, you really have the ability to route a lot of different functionality to different pins. They have a whole sort of pin routing 
or MUX set up so you can route a lot of different features. Now, Arduino though, because they're trying to make this you know easy to use uh, with the Arduino form factor, they don't allow you to route a lot of things to whatever pin you want to use. And so, and so it's not really an exposed capability. But if you go to the variance file, you can actually modify it to allow you to use some of the other pins for different types of communication. And here I'm showing two things. First, I'm showing you where you can find the variance file on your Windows machine. I, I, didn't, I don't have it for Mac. But it's not in the normal C drive where you find, uh, or in the program files where you find the AVR variance file. If you want to find this one for the zero, it's actually in the user files. Uh, and here I, here I put your name. This had my name. I didn't want to put my name there. But that's where you can find the variance file. Now, finding it doesn't really help because you need to understand how to change it. And I'm not going to cover that in this video, but Adafruit, if you go to this link, and I'll put this link in the comments section of the video as, excuse me, the description of the video as well as on my blog. But if you follow this link, they do a great job of explaining what the file's for, how to use it, the different pins, they're gonna show that same pin mapping that I showed in the sketch. But then they also have tutorials on how you can change, you know, different digital pins into a spy port or into a serial port. So you can actually increase the flexibility of the different communication capabilities of the zero. But once again, feel free to check that out. You are going to have to, you know, modify this variance file and you know, you're going to want to keep a copy of the original if you ever want to change back. Okay, that's it for accessing hidden pins on the Arduino Zero where we talked about how to get six additional digital pins as well as to add some more flexibility to the communication capabilities of the Arduino Zero. If you have any other sort of insights or hints on how to get extra functionality out of the Arduino, please use the comments section underneath the video. Thank you for watching.